Welcome. My name is Ed Mackey. I'm here with Alex Wood. We're both 3D graphics engineers on the SDK uh, 3D graphics team. And we are continuing our CubeSat video, or series of videos. This will be part eight of the video series. In the previous series, uh, we built this CubeSat model that you see on the screen in front of you, twirling around an SDK. But one thing this model does not have is it does not have any articulations. That means it, it can't move its little flaps. I'd like them to be able to fold and deploy and whatnot. So we're gonna see if we can figure out how to make that happen. For that, I'm gonna use a different product called Visual Studio Code, not to be confused with Visual Studio. This is a different product, Visual Studio Code from Microsoft. It's a free download code.visualstudio.com, I believe. And I'm using a couple of extensions here. I'm using the GLTF tools extension for help with GLTF files. It has a cool GLTF preview feature where we can preview our CubeSat. And I'm also using another extension called GMDF. That's the GLTF metadata file. That's an AGI specific file, AGI specific extension and an AGI specific file for adding our own little bits of metadata onto GLTF files to identify parts that can move in SDK. So the next thing I'm gonna do is create one of these GMDF files. I'm going to find a good place for my new little editor and hit save as. And in my CubeSat folder, I'll hit star dot star and see these are the files in my CubeSat folder. Here's the main CubeSat model. I don't wanna overwrite that. Instead, I want to write a GMDF file with the same file name next to it. Part of the reason we do this is so that if I were to go back into an authoring tool like Blender, I would be able to make changes to the model and save the model without overwriting my GMDF file because Blender doesn't know anything about a GMDF file. So I could make changes to it and save it out. Yeah, th this is a file that we created at AGI specifically for this means of capturing metadata that only SDK, or, SDK cares about. And that way you can, as Ed said, iterate through in your tools and change your model and continue authoring that without stopping over all of this, this metadata that you, you, not, you might not want to necessarily lose and rewrite each time you change your model. That's right. And if you're watching along, uh, you may not realize the keyboard hotkey I'm hitting is control space. And whenever I hit control space, it shows me autocomplete of what I can add. Uh, these top two extensions and extras, don't worry about them. They're, they're part of the weird way that extra bits of data can be added into a GLTF. The remaining ones are the ones we care about. So I've used control space several times. Uh, it wrote the name of the extension on there. It's made a list of articulations for me. And every articulation has a list of stages. These square brackets indicate a list. The squiggly brackets indicate an object that is a, a set of key value pairs. Right. So, and you also, because uh, the schema has descriptions, you do get the tooltips when you hover over those yeah, properties, which is very useful. Yeah, you should get useful. little, uh, little tooltips indicating uh, what this means. So the unique name of the articulation stage or the unique name of the articulation itself. We're creating an articulation with only one stage. That stage is going to open the flaps. And this next thing I'm going to put in is the type. The type is probably the most important piece of a stage. It's, it tells you what actually changes. You could change the uniform scale. You could rotate, translate, and scale an individual axis. And of course, we are applying this to an individual node. So in this case, one of the flaps, I'm going to say I want to rotate because we want these flaps to rotate on this little hinge joint. And I'm going to take a guess and say it's an X rotation. The reason I think that is because in GLTF land, Y is up, Z is forward. And when I built this in Blender, the X axis was the side to side one that the flap is going to rotate on. But if I get it wrong, it's only going to take me two other guesses to, to fix it up. So this, that, that is a total guess then, Ed? You've never tried this I've before? never rehearsed this or done this before? No, I, uh -huh. I have indeed rehearsed this a couple of times. But when we built it in Blender, I believe I even talked about having that x-axis be the correct one that would actually rotate. 
So I'm putting in three more values that are very important. Every stage needs a minimum, an initial, and a maximum. And typically, you want the initial value to stay at zero. If you don't do that, then SDK's default orientation of the model will be different from other GLTF viewers because it will apply this initial value right off the bat. So you want to be careful about those. It's not that you're forbidden from putting a non-zero value in there, but you want to be careful that that introduces a, a, a default behavior that's different from any other program that deals in GLTFs. Now there's one other thing to notice here, this little yellow squiggle, it's warning me that I've forgotten something. I'm missing a property called model nodes. Model nodes is an important property. So I'm gonna hit control space one more time and pick my model nodes property. It is a list of names of model nodes. These names can be found in the GLTF itself. If you're lucky enough that the nodes are near the top, you might even find the node that you want right, right here near the top. Here's flap one. And in that case, I can hit control C and control V and paste it right in there. If it wasn't that easy to find, there are a couple of other ways to do this. Babylon here, for example, has this little debugger and you can actually go and pick uh, a flap and, and see what these different node names are. Avoid the ones marked primitive, but you could pick any of these other nodes. And here it's, it's showing me this node and it's showing me the name is flap one. And that is also the, the name that I copy pasted into the, uh, into the model node thing here. And this is actually a big upgrade in terms of our modeling authoring for SDK because you know, now we have this you know, interactive way of kind of inspecting the model and kind of defining these articulations with some interactive feedback. So this has been quite the upgrade. Yeah. So it turns out SDK would be willing to load this just as is. It will go look for this little sidecar GMDF. When I load the GLTF, it will go look for this sidecar file and pull it in. But I want to iterate a little more quickly than that. And I can actually do that with some help from Cesium. But for that, Cesium will not look for the GMDF. So I have to actually get that information here into my, into my model file. And using my extension, I'm going to hit F1 and type inject. You can actually use a command from that GMDF extension to inject it into the GLTF. I'm going to say that. And let's look at what happens. Flap1 got a little extension put on it. It's an AGI articulation extension. This is the official extension mechanism of GLTF 2.0, but it's a vendor specific extension, vendor being AGI. So it said it's putting this flaps articulation on there. And then way down at the bottom of this file, it marked the extension as being used and it put the, the stage down here, which is a reference by name. So that I'm going to go ahead and hit save on that. And my preview window will update when I do that. And now if I go over to Cesium, the Cesium viewer will actually understand what an AGI articulation is. And flap one will actually move when I uh, get this model into the Cesium viewer. I can see what my articulation is. And I can see 180 degrees. I've, I've gone a little too far. This flap was actually at 135 originally in Blender. So we need to adjust. And rather than adjust it in the GLTF, I am going to adjust it here in the GMDF uh, just so that I can keep all my files in sync. So the minimum is actually now 135. And the maximum, I'm going to do positive 45. And together, that's 180 degrees spread. So let's save that. And since I saved it, I have to come back here, hit F1 and eject it back in. And Control S to save that. And go back to Cesium. And now we can see the wrong flap. There it is. There we go. So the flap closes and the flap opens. And that's pretty good. But that's only one of the four flaps. So if I needed the flaps to move individually, I could copy and paste this whole stage, right? I could uh, actually, no, I could copy and paste the whole articulation and I could make a flap one articulation, a flap two articulation like that. 
I don't want to do that. I want this to apply to all four. So I'm going to do the naive thing and just copy paste that line and say flap one, two, three, four and hit save on that. Is that going to work? I've told it it's the X axis on each of these four flaps. Let's re inject that and save the result there. And we will find out something interesting. That does work. Look at that. Now, why would that work? The X is we're doing an X rotation, but we're doing an X rotation not in body coordinates and not in GLTF coordinates. We're doing an X rotation on that individual node that is the flap. And remember, in Blender, we copied and rotated this around four times. So the X axis actually points in four different directions, and the rotation happens four different ways for all these flaps. I'm going to do one more thing to this model before we wrap this up, and that is over here in the GLTF land, I am going to right click and say export to the binary file. And in this binary file, instead of uh, CubeSat 7, I'm going to call it CubeSat 8. I'm saving a GLB, which is a binary bundle. And when I do that, VS Code will automatically pull everything in, all the mesh data from the bin file and all the texture images. It will not automatically pull in the GMDF, but as it happens, I've already injected that. So it has no choice. That's already in there. So that went into the GLB as well. And indeed, down in my folder here, I now have a new 8 file. It's not associated with my GMDF or any of these other pieces. It's a standalone file. And we are going to pull that back into SDK. So I'm going to hit CubeSat 8. I'm going to hit Apply. By the way, we're using a cool uh, HDRI image, the Aerodynamics Workshop from HDRI Haven. That's, that's how we get these cool reflections on here. And let's see if uh, let's see if I got my articulation. So now I have a flaps articulation, and I can move these flaps around. So let's uh, let me uh, cancel out of that, and let's pull movie timeline up here for a minute. And in movie timeline, we're going to add uh, an object timeline, and we're going to add those flaps right over there. Okay, uh, not doing that for right now. Okay, and then maybe right about here, I'm going to say that these flaps need to open. So they, they start closed and they end open like that. So now I have this whole articulation of the flaps opening. And uh, it looks like that might be a little slow. So let's make that happen a little quicker. So now when that red line touches there, the, the articulation should run and these flaps should open, and our CubeSat is thereby deployed. Thank you all for watching our little video, and we hope you enjoyed this.